Welcome to the Complete Masterclass with me, Stephen Mather. Two questions. Managers, what are they good for? And don't say absolutely nothing. What's the difference between a manager and a leader? So those are the two questions we're going to explore first. Now, in order to explore this, I want you to take yourself into a different place. I want you to imagine that you get shipwrecked onto a desert island. There's you and about 50 other people who have all been washed ashore. Now, what are your two main goals? I would suggest, firstly, you want to make sure that you and everyone else survives. And secondly, that ultimately you get rescued. And in order to think about how you might do that and how that might relate to management and leadership, I'd like you to do an exercise. So this is a little exercise I do with my training programs when I deliver them to businesses. So we normally get people to have a think about this first. And it's called the Desert Island Exercise. And I've already set the scene for you. So there's you and these 50 other people and you've got two goals, to survive and escape. So at the end of this program, there's an activity section where you can download this sheet. So if you could do that now, so download activity one, print the sheet and jot down the answers to these three questions. If you can't be bothered to download the thing, well, just get a piece of paper and write the answers to these questions down. So I'd like you to think about this. Firstly, what would need to be done? So this is basically the stuff that you and everybody else would need to do in order to survive and to escape. So what sort of things need to be done? So just to give you an example, I presume one of the first things you think about would be fresh water. I'd need to find fresh water or we'd need to find fresh water. So a list of things like that. Second question, what would the qualities be of the person who ended up being in charge? It could be more than one person. But I'd like you to think about what their qualities would be. Now, sometimes when I do this exercise, we end up in a discussion about sort of political systems and so on. But we want to ignore that. So we just want to accept that we're going to have somebody or some people who are going to take a leadership role. And I'd like you to think about what qualities you'd want in that person or people. So what sort of skills experience maybe, knowledge, personality traits, behaviours, that sort of stuff. So try and draw a picture for me of the ideal person in charge. And thirdly, that person or those people, what would they be doing? So what is the sort of day-to-day -day activity, week-by-week -week activity, or as soon as they got up in the morning, what sort of things would they end up doing? So those are your three questions. Have a think about those, jot them down and pause this video here and then come back and we'll have a think about some of the answers you might have got. OK, so welcome back. Hopefully you've had a go at that exercise. So don't forget the goals. The goals are to survive and escape. So those are the two things you're trying to do. And I asked you to think about those three questions. What needs to be done was the first question. What were some of the ideas you had on your sheet. Well, the first one I'm going to think about is that you might want to tend to the injured, but you also might need to find fresh water. You obviously need to find food. That could be finding berries or other fruits. It could be that there's some animals that you could hunt. You might want to explore the island. You probably would want to find some shelter or maybe find a way to build some simple shelter. And you'd likely want to build a fire for heat and warmth and for cooking. I'm sure you've got some other things on your list, which is fine, but these are the sorts of things that people generally come up with. 
The second question I asked you to think about was the person in charge. So obviously that has some relevance for us on our course, which is about leadership and management. What sort of person or people would we want to be in charge of that situation? So again, typical answers that come from this exercise are we'd want people who are calm, somebody who is good at organising things, able to plan, somebody that seemed credible that we could have trust and faith in, somebody who showed that they were confident at what they were doing and showed assertive behaviour. So these are the sorts of qualities that we'd want from a person in charge. Now the third question was what would that person be doing? So some examples might be, firstly, they might do a head count. So how many people do we have on the island? And we might want to know how many young people, how many children, how many elderly, if there's anyone with a disability. So we'd want to make sure we understood the group that we had. And that would obviously affect the decisions that we were going to make. We might then do a skills audit. So we might ask questions like, you know, do we have a doctor? Do we have anybody that's had experience living in the wild? Do we have farmers or people that grow crops of any kind? So we try to find out what sort of skills we had that we could obviously use to help us survive and escape. I guess quite a lot of our time, if we were that person in charge, would be spent giving direction, asking people to do things. Uh, so I'd like you to do this, please. I'd like you to go and explore over the other side of that ridge. Can you and these other people go and try to find some fresh water over there? So you'd be basically giving people instruction and direction. You might create some small teams. So we'll make you the explorers of that side of the island or we'll make you the explorers of this side of the island. And it's your job to, to do this and that and so on. So you might create some teams who had complementary skills, personalities and so on. Of course, you'd have to delegate quite a lot. So you couldn't do it all yourself, as we've already talked about. And you might need to do things like planning for your usage of resources and in particular food. Now in order to do that sort of thing, you might do some processes and systems development. So you might start to create some systems and processes. Now you might not think about them in those terms, but you do that naturally. So let me give you an example. One morning you hear this great shout and somebody's found that the tide has washed ashore a crate of beans, a crate of tinned beans and there's lots and lots of them. Now, I'm sure you wouldn't just go and say, great, everybody help yourselves, have as many as you like. No, I'm sure you would ration those, you would decide how many have we got first of all, you'd have to count, you'd have to get a count done, you'd have to think about how much of these beans do we eat a day, do we have half a tin for everybody? Then you'd think, okay, well, how do we manage that? Do we have to have security? Do we have to have a way of making sure that People don't come back for more on the same day if they're only allocated half a tin. So we'd have to have a system to make sure that everybody got their fair share, but nobody took advantage of the situation. You might have to have some security and so on. So there's lots of systems and processes that you might put in place around that to make that work. Other things that you might need to do if you're in charge would be to provide confidence in what you were doing you'd need to provide reassurance. If you didn't do that, people might start to get very depressed and very upset, and they might start to doubt that they, they're ever going to get off this island. So you'd need to provide the vision that said, yeah, you know, we can do this. We've got a team of people who can work together and we can make it off this island. And you'd listen to people, you'd listen to the group, you'd respond, you'd take ideas on board, you'd hear how they felt and so on. And of course, you'd need to maintain morale. So there's a long list of things there. And we could go on all day thinking about the different things you would have to do or the person in charge would have to do in order to make sure as a group we survived and we escaped. Now, what you might be noticing is that there are subtle differences in these different sorts of things that the person in charge would need to do. So think about it for a moment. There's some stuff in there like planning, giving teams direction, uh, developing processes and systems that are really about making sure that the right components are in the right place and that you're utilising your resources effectively. And then there's other things in that list like providing vision, providing reassurance, 
listening to people, maintaining morale that are more about the people side of things, keeping people on board, keeping them motivated, keeping them happy and so on. So there's actually two sides to that role of being in charge. So that really helps us understand the difference between management, which is what we've got defined here on this slide, and leadership, which we'll have a look in a moment. So management is defined as the efficient and appropriate use of the resources at your disposal to achieve a goal. So it's really about all that stuff that we saw that you might be doing things like planning, organising, giving people jobs to do, all of that utilisation of resources. That's when you're being a manager. On the other hand, leadership is about influencing people to follow your lead by creating a compelling vision of the future. So that's about making sure people know that they can survive and believing that they can survive and keeping their vision clear, listening to them, helping them, developing them, training them, giving them what they need in order to help you deliver your goals. So we have two different types of skills, management and leadership. So let's just list some of the qualities of, of each of those. So when you're managing, you're doing things like organising. You're doing things like deciding upon what tasks need to be done. You're planning, you're directing, you're measuring, you're checking people's work, you're checking what's been done, and you're using processes and systems to make sure those things are done as efficiently as possible. So these are management type activities, really, really important. When you're leading, you're doing things like setting goals, creating a vision, influencing people, inspiring people, setting in an example, and it's all about people. So what I normally do at this point is I say, okay, which is most important then? And when I'm doing these courses in front of a group, I generally get some people say leadership, some people say management, but most people realise that it's a trick question. Of course it is that actually we need a bit of both. We need to be able to do management and we need to be able to do leadership. They are both absolutely vital and we need to be able to do both. Okay, time for a quick quiz. First question, what is the primary focus of management? Second question, what is the primary focus of leadership? Pause this video, have a think about the answers to those questions and jot them down. So the answers to the quiz. First question, what is the primary focus of management? That is organising the resources using processes and systems. Second question, what is the primary focus of leadership? Influencing people. 